Hey YouTube, top loaded. It's time to get top loaded. Might already be top loaded, but we'll see. I did get a mail day today. Um, we'll just kind of brush over it because it's not really what I'm all strung out about. I'm always strung out about one of these cards, but baseball, hmm. <laughs> Some fun stuff happening right now. We'll get into that in a minute though. We'll crack this thing open. I'm in a big old race to get this, this rainbow completed. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know exactly where I'm going with this. Um, picked this one up for a pretty good deal. Made an offer. He took it. I think I paid 80 bucks. It's not bad considering how much these things are going for. My goodness. Uh, it's not graded, so I'm a little nervous with the scissors. Oh, boy. Uh, I always appreciate a good packing job. Usually, you know, once I see the cards, fine. Unbelievable. There we go. Boy. Maybe it's top loaded. <laughs> I hope it's top loaded. This might be the craziest unpacking job I've ever had to <sighs> every time I think I've made it. I know I sound like I'm complaining, but I'm actually appreciative. There we go. No blue tape, but she's in there. Got the lime. And this one, I don't know if it would grade out at a 10, but it's centered pretty well. Pretty sharp corners. Even if I got a 9, I'd probably be happy. But right now, a 10 is going for, well, there's a $300 price tags roughly all day long, and it's getting kind of pricey to put these together and the the reds and the purples and the blues and the aquas are getting crazy so I'm thinking I might just sub them myself but uh, here's uh, <laughs> the rest of them so might be a pretty awesome collection here before long but that aside excited to add that to the collection but uh, my mind's been wrapped around Pete Alonzo the last few days and that boy's mashing, and I'm kind of excited to see where he ends up. You know, he only needs, well, last I checked, I think he only needs, what, uh, eight? Eight home runs to break the rookie record, which is, I think, 52 held by Aaron Judge. And McGuire's 49, even, you know, second place. He's just got those two guys to overcome. And I think if I read it right, he's the first rookie to break his franchise's club home run record and reestablish, you know, a new one, obviously. Since 1928. That's crazy. That's crazy. Especially with all these. I mean, I guess Judge was a Yankee. and um, I don't know, remember who. I should have checked. McGuire must have broke Reggie Jackson's or I don't know. I don't know. But uh, maybe that just has to do with club only. I don't have to look into that. That's kind of interesting. But uh, on the Pete Alonzo subject, me and a few of my other friends have been talking about picking up some hardcore cards. Obviously, despite Aaron Judge's falling off and... You know, 27 home run seasons since. Uh, will he maintain pace? You know, I mean, Pete Alonso's been pretty consistent all year. I mean, he's had a couple little slumpy periods, but nothing too bad. His batting average is mm, par. We'll call it par. It's not Hall of Fame worthy, but it's pretty good. 265, somewhere in that ballpark, you know. But with nearly 50 home runs, who can complain about a rookie? I've got quite a stack of his rookie cards as it is. My favorite one... Is actually a pretty plain and simple one. I don't know if it's going to be a sleeping giant or just a forgotten card. It's this guy right here. This is the 2019 Tops Total. I do believe there are only like, and don't quote me on this, I could be wrong, but around 555 of these. I don't remember the print runs for each wave of 100 cards anymore. I used to know, but I can't remember anymore. But at any rate, there's only 500 plus of these. And uh, it's kind of, I mean... It's kind of got, like when it's out of here, it's got a little bit of a Tiffany-like presence. I mean, it's glossy. Um, the Topps Total, you know, look, if you guys remember 2001, 2002, 2003, they had Topps Total back then. I don't know. It could be kind of a little sleeping giant because it's one of his first regular issue type, even though the distribution method was kind of odd with the online-only purchases. But uh, I think that one's worth picking up. I think I paid something like 20 bucks for that a couple months ago, and... I believe I've seen it going for right around 50 or 60 bucks. 
it's not quite up there with the Topps Gold yet, but as far as a base, non-auto, non-refractor, non-crazy, kind of like what we collected when we were kids cards, you know, which is probably one of my favorite types. I love the refractor. I love the shimmer. I love the bling, just like everybody else. But at the end of the day, I still get pretty caught up in just the plain old-fashioned card, something that would have probably been in my binder in 1988, you know, when I was 10 years old. And I'm always going to have a love for these. So if I can get a base that is super low printed like this and was cracked from a pack even. I mean, it's I don't really get into that other crap from Topps. I've got a couple, but Topps has no business being in our market. They have no business being in the secondary market. You know, they're printing money right now. And I'm not a really, I'm not a real big fan of that when they start printing, you know, Topps Now cards, which are kind of cool in a way, but when they start doing autographs and selling them for 300 and 700 bucks, I mean, they're just printing money at that point in time, and it's it's setting a. I feel like it's setting a, a false value that that's just not going to necessarily be able to hold up. I guess it just depends on how into those cards everybody really is in years to come. Really, I've been worrying about there being a little bit of a bubble, anyways, and the bubble not anything like the bubble from when we were kids, but more of the fact that it's. I don't know how many generations below us there really are. But ours is swelling. Our generation is swelling. I'm seeing more and more people from our age bracket who's spending, spending, spending. And I'm wondering how many 20-something teens and even 8- and 9-year-olds there are that's that interested in the hobby. And if that's the case, it makes me wonder, you know, 20 years from now, 25, when in my retirement years, you know, when, you know, our guys are starting to sell off their cards to make way for a retirement or starting to drop off left and right. Basically, it's doing this, you know. I wonder if there's anybody left to pick up the slack. So that's what makes me nervous about going out and spending a thousand dollars on a two-year-old card just because there's only 50 of them in existence that's, you know, glows in the dark and, you know, pours your drink for you. So, I don't know. I like those cards, but, man, I like to get out on them early just like everybody else. So, if I get into a refractor, I stick with a base refractor. I might buy an autograph refractor. I mean, maybe none of y'all care about my opinion, <laughs> but that's just me. Every now and again, I get stupid. I mean, look at me with the Mahomes cards. I'm spending more than they probably should be worth, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, the other guy I'm kind of thinking about is Fernando Tatis Jr. I don't have his top's total card. I don't even know if he has one. I don't think I've even looked. I assume he probably does. That's like a 900 card set, but, uh, you know... Eh, with him being out, I, that's one guy who you know, got a little stack of his rookies. Nothing to be excited about. Came out of some basic packs, you know. But uh, that's one guy that, uh, despite injuries, has been fairly consistent. It seems like he'll be out, he'll be hurt, and then he'll come back and just start doing his thing. Just boom, just hitting home runs, doing doing what he does. You know, most guys they get hurt, they come back from the DL, and they kind of slump a little bit. And I'm not saying the guy's superhuman. He kind of has his slow moments, but I mean. The guy's been fairly consistent for as much as he's been hurt. <sighs> Guerrero, I don't know. This has just turned into a bit of a rookie talk. This is just the stuff that's been on my mind today. Guerrero, I'm just not even going to go there. I don't have much to say about Guerrero. And Eloy Jimenez, maybe a little bit to say, but I won't. I think I'm, I'm primarily focused on Alonzo. I think Alonzo's the real deal. His momentum has just been amazing. And I can see myself doing something stupid and dropping a big chunk of change on a good rookie refactor auto or you know a, maybe a first bowman chrome i i don't know i don't know as long as he doesn't turn into a judge and he you know goes the route of a kuna it could be exciting i don't know you guys let me know what you think when it gets to this time of the year oh man this time of year is very exciting when it comes to trying to figure out who am I going to buy in the off season? Because as you all know, the off season is like the best time, the best time to pick up some of these cards. Everybody's thinking about football. Everybody's thinking about Christmas. Nobody's thinking about baseball. It, you know, a few people who are, they're listing stuff and the prices can still be kind of high, but the auctions, I don't feel like you have near as many people trying to bid you down, bid you out, bid you over, you know what I mean? Whatever the case may be. Um, I'll start digging stuff like this out. This is all my, this is going to sound sick. All you anti-wax pack rippers are going <laughs> to shred me, but I don't care. I don't care. Uh, it's all my, 
Let's see if I can do this. 2019 Bowman. Um, all prospects. All chrome and paper prospects. Some of these guys. Guys that I was thinking was going to be pretty good on top here with the top loaders. Jordan Alvarez. I've got a lot that won't even fit. I've got two stacks about like this full of first year. A whole stack of autographs over there. Some of which are pretty good, you know, in my opinion, but not necessarily worth anything yet. Oh, so the off season, that's what I'll spend my time doing is trying to sort through this stuff and trying to figure out what am I going to submit to PSA? What am I maybe going to sell? Am I going to try and trade? I don't know. I realize this video is kind of all over the place, but that's kind of how my mind's been. And in all fairness, I've had a big boy drink or two or three. So <laughs> I apologize if I'm kind of, you know, not making any sense, but with Alonzo doing his thing and me collecting him all year and thinking he was going to be awesome and I love when I call it right, you know, not that it was a big secret or anything, but, you know, I missed out on Acuna last year. I was busy collecting Soto. I got quite a few Acunas, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, I was busy I was busy chasing the Soto stuff and trading stuff off for the Soto and trading off the Acuna even and saving the Soto. You know, there's a nice little auto out of 99. That's one of my favorite cards right there. Need to get it graded, but uh, I don't know. I haven't really had much interest in him lately. I think he's going to be awesome, but, you know, Acuna Mania, Alonzo Mania, <laughs> it's just been, it's been a ride, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for me and my, my rambling ways here. I think the pizza's upstairs now, so I'm going to bid you guys adieu and say sayonara, see you later, man. You guys have a good one.